Hi guys, it's Ashley from Ashart Books, and today I'm here to talk about spring cleaning. I think this time of year, we all kind of get that bug or that desire to kind of clean or organize our homes, and it always, for me, really applies to our books as well. And so today I'm gonna talk about a few ways that I like to organize my books and maybe just some ideas in case you're trying to, you know, organize your books, find new places around your home for them, um, as well as a few things that I do think about when I have to get rid of a book and what I kind of consider when doing that. I really love using books around my whole home. I heard this saying once that there are two things that make um, a house into a home and make it cozy, and that's books and blankets. And I definitely agree. You'll see many of those throughout my home. And so I kind of wanted to go over a few places that I like to organize my books, put books, um, and kind of use them throughout the house. So obviously the first place is a shelf. So I really like having a bookshelf in my living room. Um, so the one I'm sitting in front of is in my living room. And I was lucky that this kind of built-in one came with this um, apartment. But if you don't have that, any kind of bookshelf will do. I just like the idea of them being in the main part of the house that's like the cozy epicenter, if you will. But I will say, I do like them to be kind of organized and look, you know, nice for when people are over. So I used to have this as a rainbow bookshelf and I think I might turn it back into that because I think it's just really pretty to look at. But aside from having, you know, just a bookshelf in our living room, there's lots of other places you can kind of organize your books. And so I actually love using them as decor or part of my decor. So I actually have floating bookshelves that I made a few years ago with the help of my mom. And we bought the plywood, you know, at Home Depot. We sanded it and stained it, put the brackets on, and it's been living in my dining slash living room ever since. So I'll include like a picture or a video of that because I think this is a great way to kind of bring in decor. It doesn't have to be floating shelves. You can put whatever you want, but I just, I love changing this up for seasons. So right now I've kind of got more springy type um, books on there and colors. Um, but in the fall, I really like putting more of my favorite fantasies and paranormal romances. And I just think it's a great way to organize your books in a different kind of way. And also to kind of spread the love around the house, if you will. Um, I, I also really love collecting vintage books. And I know a lot of people collect different types of books. Sometimes it's like collector's editions. Sometimes it is vintage or older books. And using this kind of a shelf um, as a mix of like decor and books is a really great way to kind of showcase, you know, multiple things that you like um, in your life. Another thing I'd really recommend is, like I said, spread the love throughout the house. I would say there's probably not a room in my house that doesn't have books except for probably the bathroom. Um, but I love using a stack of books on my coffee table to kind of stack up and put maybe a candle on top of. I have them on my nightstand and I use really pretty ones in there as part of that. If you have a TBR pile, I think it's really fun to put a basket maybe by your couch and put all of the books that you're really excited to read in there. That way they're kind of in your eyesight, but they're organized at the same time. And then even in the kitchen, I love keeping my cookbooks. I keep mine in a basket on top of the fridge and a few down below by my cutting boards that I like to use all the time. But I feel like this is just a way to keep your books organized in different areas of your home. But also, to be honest with you, a lot of us don't have unlimited space. So doing it this way and kind of using it as decor, but organizing it in different locations around your house is kind of a way to make it look pretty, but also be functional in the fact that like, it's not all on one shelf. So now I kind of want to talk about the sad truth that sometimes we do have to kind of unhaul books, give them to a friend, donate them because we just don't have unlimited space. I don't know about you, but even with all of my organization techniques, it still doesn't always happen. But when that happens, we do have to give away some books. So these are five things that I like to think about when I'm deciding what books to keep and which ones maybe to let find a new home um, with someone else. So the first one is, did I like it? I know that's kind of obvious, but for me, if I didn't love a book or at least really like it, I don't feel need to necessarily keep a physical version of it on my shelf. And that's kind of changed over the years for me. I feel like nowadays I really want to look at my shelf and just look at all the things I absolutely loved reading and all the good memories along with that. So if I didn't love it, I think that's a good sign that maybe I need to gift it, give it to somebody else, put it in a free little library, help it find a life of a new life elsewhere. 
Second thing I really think about a lot is will I reread it? So I am a really big rereader. So I feel like for me, this might be a bigger deal than others, but I, part of the reason I want to keep books is because I like to reread them. So if it's something that I don't think I'll reread, I think there's less of a attachment of me keeping a copy of it um, versus if it's something I'm like, yes, I want to dive back into that again. I want to explore it again. I want to visit those characters again. It's a comfort read. I'm much more likely to keep that book on my shelf. Another thing to consider when you're organizing and thinking about maybe unhauling some books is do I have another version of this book? I think a lot of us can be guilty of buying the ebook and the physical copy and a collector's edition, um, or like you have one copy, you get another copy for as a gift, and you just end up having multiple versions. And while there's nothing wrong with that, it might be a good idea to maybe think about, okay, like do I love the cover and I'm gonna keep the regular physical version, or do I have it as an ebook? I'm probably gonna read it again as an ebook, and I don't maybe love the cover art, so I think I could get rid of the physical book and keep the ebooks. Next reason I think about is kind of vain. I'm gonna admit it, but that's, is it pretty? Because like I said, I love using books in my home as decor. And so if it has a beautiful cover, even if it wasn't something I do see myself rereading or I did it maybe like top, top love, I'm probably gonna be more likely to keep it because I'll use it somewhere else. You know, maybe it's a beautiful floral cover and I'll bring it out in spring, or maybe it has a really moody dark cover and I'll bring it out in the fall. So. I'm not gonna lie, definitely consider that when I'm thinking about what to keep and maybe what to um, give away. And the last thing I think about really is how long ago did I read it? Because this is something I've really been working on when I'm organizing my books recently because I bought a lot of books when I first started kind of reading a lot more and a lot of those like years ago and a lot of those are YA titles and I still love YA books and I still love a lot of them but some of them I just don't think I'm gonna reach for anymore and even if they were favorites say five eight years ago they're probably not something that I necessarily need to keep all of now so I'm trying to be selective and maybe only keep my absolute favorites from that time period. And that way newer books and newer favorites can have a place, you know, in my home, on my shelf. So those are just a couple of things I think about when I'm trying to organize my books. So hopefully that gave you a few tips to kind of help you with your spring cleaning and organizing of your shelves. Okay, so now for the info on the sale. So Harlequin Publishing is having a really great spring cleaning sale. They have up to 60% off um, a lot of their backlist or older titled ebooks and there are some really good ones there so i wanted to give just a few books that are concluded in that sale that you could check out one is nashville rebel by sherry whitefeather another one is night heat by brenda jackson we have colton's pursuit of justice by marie ferrarella i had to look down because that's a long last name so i want to make sure i said it correctly there's um the spanish tycoon's takeover by michelle douglas included and then also undercover connection by heather graham i really like heather graham i've liked quite a few of her books so all of those are books that are included in that 60 percent off sale and some of these have really cheap ebook prices so definitely take a look i'm going to take a little peek and see if there's anything because you know you cleaned off your shelf you cleaned off your kindle so now you can fill it back up which is kind of the point of the cleaning in the first place right thank you guys so much for watching this video if you want to see more videos all about the romance in your books make sure to subscribe down below